My story means a lot to me because it's about my journey from Ukraine to Winnipeg that completely changed my life. It was very difficult, but I'm happy to be here and I'm very thankful for this opportunity. My journey to Winnipeg from Ukraine. The war changed my life. It started on February 21st, 2022. My family and I had to find a safe place to live because my city, Vashneva, which is near Kyiv, was bombed every day and almost got occupied in the first few days, so it was impossible to stay there. We had no electricity, warms, gas for a car, hot water, work, school or peace. Everything became too expensive and we started to lose a lot of money. We decided to move to the west of Ukraine for the first time because my mother, brother and I wanted to stay longer with my dad, who as a male aged 18 to 60 may be mobilized and have no right to leave Ukraine. We moved closer to our border with Hungary to go to Europe and leave my father as soon as it became too dangerous to stay. We lived in a small village in an abandoned aged house with another family of my friends for two months. After a few weeks there, we lost our hope and we were ready for everything to stop so we could enjoy life again. We saw on Facebook that Canada was offering help and allowing people to enter their country as residents. We spent weeks applying for a place. We went to Hungary to get fingerprints done in a Canadian embassy because the ones we have in Ukraine were closed due to bombing. After two months, we got a response and permission to go to Canada. As soon as we decided to leave Ukraine in the middle of spring, we took everything we had and went back home, even though it was still risky. The way was tough. It took too long to get back to the country's center from the west by car. We didn't have much time due to the curfew each Ukrainian region has had since the beginning of the war. My dad tried to get home as fast as possible, not to stay anywhere for a night. But unfortunately, in a hurry, we got into a terrible car accident. So we had to spend even more money to repair our car and to get an apartment in an expensive city in the West. It was extremely stressful and tiring for my parents, my brother, me, and especially for my cat who hadn't been outside of our house before the war for all his life, which was almost seven years. After a few days, we finally got home and started to get ready to move. My mother bought tickets for trains and planes and rented a room in Krakow, the city in Poland where we had to stay for two days before our trip to Canada. Also, we got our cat vaccinated, but later decided to leave him in Ukraine at home with my dad because this journey would be too hard for him and even harder for us with him. My family, without my father, and I left our home city on August 24th, Ukrainian Independence Day. We took an international train to Poland. The way was very hard, long and scary, because we were afraid that Russians would bomb the train as they did with others. After a few hours, we crossed the border and got checked by Ukrainian border guards. It went well, so we were able to continue our journey. Then we reached our first destination, the Polish city of Przemysl, where we got checked again by Polish border guards and got stamps in our passports. It was a very difficult way, but we had to keep going instead of resting, so we bought tickets for the next train that got us to Krakow, where we were supposed to stay until our flight. It was an exciting experience. I met many great people, who made me so happy and gave me a lot of hope that this decision to move was worth it. Krakow is a fantastic city with many historical buildings, lovely friendly people, music, dancing and fun. I enjoyed the time there and my family did as well, which was a huge problem because they wanted to give up on Canada and stay in Poland. I like that country, but Canada has been my dream since I was 10 and I really wanted to try to start a new life here. I convinced my family that we shouldn't stay in Europe, so we packed our stuff back and went to the airport in the middle of the night. From Poland, we had a flight to the German city Frankfurt and stayed in the airport for eight hours waiting for our flight to Vancouver. It was a very hard time. I haven't slept for three days and got sick. Everyone was stressed and tired of carrying baggage, flying and running around to avoid missing anything. But we managed to get on the plane where we spent 11 hours. It was an amazing flight with music, movies and food. I was super excited to be in North America for the first time in my life and see the beautiful landscape of Canada. 
When we arrived in Vancouver, we went through all the controls again, declared money and got work and study permits. It all took a very long time because there was not enough stuff in the airport, and the only people there were mean and slow. That's why we missed our flight to Winnipeg and had to get tickets for the next day. The most fascinating part was that we'd already given our baggage which flew without us. We had no choice but to get a room in a hotel at the airport. It was very expensive, around $200 for one night without water, food, and anything else included. But at least we had a good sleep. We woke up early to avoid missing another flight and finally got into a plane. It was a small plane with a lot of different interesting people. My family and I set all apart, so I managed to talk to others. That's how my mom made a friend whose sister is in the Rotary Club, knows a lot of people and adopted two beautiful kids from Ukraine that year. She helped us a lot later with moving into our apartment, furniture and other things. But she wasn't the only one helping. When we arrived at the airport, we found the suitcases that went without us and met an amazing man assisting Ukrainian newcomers. With his help, we got to a hotel where we stayed for a week for free without, with free water and food. Manitoba offered us a lot of help, such as consulting, free staying in a hotel for two months, free food, mattresses, clothes, other stuff, money, and great opportunities. I was still sick at the time, which made everything way harder. But after a week in that hotel, we had to move to a different one to stay there for two more months until we found an apartment. It seemed impossible to do because apartments in Canada are very expensive and don't even suit their prices. We were told not to get it downtown because it's not the safest area. So we spent every day walking around Winnipeg and looking for a nice place to live. It was the beginning of autumn, so many other people had the same goal. We didn't have a lot of choices and time because we desperately needed our own space. That's why in one moment we stopped caring about others' opinions and got an apartment downtown. We still had to wait a month before moving, but at least I could finally go to school. That's how I ended up in Gordon Bell with the best teachers, lovely people and many friends. My journey wasn't easy and I had to leave a lot behind. But I'm thrilled to be in Winnipeg and have a normal life. I'm genuinely thankful for this opportunity, new experience, amazing people, a safe place and hope for a brighter future.